protruding from the great watery depths of Michigan's Lake Superior is an island considered sacred for thousands of years. Isle Royal, or Minong as the Native Americans referred to it, was held in this regard due to both its spiritual significance and unimaginable mineral resources. The mineral wealth referred to are extremely large copper deposits that are incredibly pure. Thousands of ancient mines dot the landscape of Isle Royal and the neighboring Keweenaw Peninsula. Estimates regarding the amounts of copper mined in ancient times is upwards of a half billion pounds. Lake core samples and carbon dating have placed the ancient mining operations back in time up to 6,500 years. It was during research into these ancient mines on Isle Royal that led to the discovery of an enormous underwater anomaly. Using Google Earth to obtain an aerial view of the island's ancient McCargo Cove, something truly out of place was observed beneath the water. Not only was the structure enormous, but it surely did not fit in with the surrounding geological features. Since the discovery, over five years had been spent trying to dig up information on this unusual structure. Currently, no information whatsoever has emerged in respect to the anomaly. Nothing on the internet, geological text, and experts have been left stumped. Over the years, the possibilities of the structure's origins have been discussed and debated with friends and professionals. Here, we will speculate on a few of the possibilities suggested. A brief description may be in order before diving into the origins of the underwater structure. The anomaly is located approximately four miles north of Isle Royale's northern rocky shores and a half mile south of the U.S.-Canadian border. According to Lake Superior bathmetric maps, the feature appears to be submerged in approximately 500 feet of water. From above, the structure appears as an oblong circle with a slight indentation on its southwest side. The width of the feature is approximately two miles, while the length at its largest point is a staggering three miles. This anomaly appears to have an opening on its northwest side that's approximately a quarter mile across. A very peculiar aspect to the structure is what appears to be a unified height and width to the perceived walls. After studying the bathmetric charts, it is approximated the walls may be around 250 feet in height. Now armed with some general information on the anomaly, a thorough investigation into its origins is in order. A few possibilities. The first, a cometary or meteoric impact, possibly issuing in the younger Dryas area. Second, a vulc volcanism. Third, an ancient mega mound site. Fourth, an Atlantean harbor or mining operation. Fifth possibility, underwater government base. And finally, the sixth possibility, USO base or possibly extraterrestrial. The first possibility is that of a cometary or meteoric impact. This scenario has been most suggested by those who the discovery has been shared with. Could this cosmic and cataclysmic scenario be a possibility? Approximately 12,800 years ago, this area of Michigan was emerging from the Ice Age. Temperatures were warming and the miles-thick Laurentide ice sheet was receding. Suddenly and without warning, the warming trend was reversed and the region was once again slammed with a cold spell that would last to around 11,600 years ago. This era is referred to as the Younger Dryas by scientists. Until recently, scientists thought the reversal from a steady warming to a sudden cooling was caused by enormous amounts of meltwater from the glaciers. The theory postulated large amounts of fresh water spilling into the Atlantic Ocean may have caused shutting down the ocean's natural conveyor belts. The shutting down of the circulating belts was believed to have slammed the northern regions back into a 1,200 to 1,300 year cold spell. Over the past few decades, a new theory has emerged. Scientific evidence has been accumulated pointing to a likely possibility of a cometary or meteoric impact ushering in the almost instantaneous cold snap. The evidence has pointed to the possible impact or explosion taking place over the Laurentide ice sheet, the precise area that we are investigating. The piece of the puzzle scientists admit they are missing is an impact crater. They speculate that the cosmic intruder may have exploded over the ice sheet, therefore leaving no evidence. In regards to a cosmic impact, could this cometary or meteoric object have slammed into miles-thick ice sheet, creating this anomalous feature? Here are a few comparisons to ponder that possibility. The second possibility that has been suggested relates to volcanism and Michigan's fiery past. The region surrounding Isle Royale and the Keweenaw Peninsula was at one time possibly the most volcanic and unstable region on the planet. After settling down for a period of time, the activity once again peaked around 1.1 billion years ago. 
During this era, the mid-continental rift was formed, splitting apart in the precise region we are discussing. For a distance of around 3,000 kilometers, the Earth split apart in an arced formation that just so happens to be centered over Isle Royale and the Keweenaw Peninsula. During this time, massive amounts of lava poured from the Earth's crust. The question becomes, could this anomaly be a remnant of this ancient volcanic activity? It should also be noted the structure lies directly on the Isle Royale fault line. The third possibility is that of ancient mega mound site. The main reason for this suggestion is surely due to the feature's similar shape and form when compared to ancient Native American earthworks. Not only are the earthen walls similar, but the perceivable openings correlate with many Native American mounds from the vicinity. The openings were many times aligned to astronomical events. The main problem with this theory is, of course, the size of the anomaly. At three miles long by two miles wide, it would be the largest ancient mega mound site in the world. The fourth scenario involves the mythological ancient Atlanteans and the possible mining of copper. Isle Royal and the Keweenaw Peninsula contain some of the largest and purest copper deposits in the world. Is it possible this structure is a leftover remnant of an ancient harbor or mining operation? It should be pointed out there were times in recent geological history in which this structure and landmass would not have been submerged. In regards to a possible Atlantean connection, several ancient writings, including Plato's Atlantis, mention a sacred metal called orichalcum. It is believed the orichalcum alloy primarily consisted of copper mixed with several other minerals in lesser amounts. In the Critias, Plato describes the Atlantean temple to Poseidon and Cleto as being adorned and covered with orichalcum. The shiny metal was said to have covered floors, walls, and even pillars. One special pillar coated in orichalcum was said to be inscribed with the laws of Poseidon. Is it possible that in an ancient time, a superculture ventured to northern Michigan to mine one of the most treasured minerals in the world? And if so, could this anomalous feature be a leftover remnant of the era? Something to ponder. A fifth possibility that's been suggested and that is that of an underwater government base. And although this may seem unlikely, underwater bases make sense in more ways than one. Of course, they would be hard to detect and even more difficult to infiltrate. Strange stories and experiences have coincidentally or not taken place in the general vicinity we are investigating. One unforgettable tale comes from a longtime acquaintance, Wayne May, publisher of the Ancient American Magazine. Years ago, I decided to show Wayne the discovery in hopes he may have some knowledge of it. Although Mr. May was unfamiliar with this structure, he did have an important tale relating to the precise area being discussed. He relayed a story of a friend, Maki, from Holt, Michigan, who happened to be fishing in the area. While fishing, Maki was startled when nearby his vessel, a periscope, emerged from the water. Maki took this unusual sighting as a warning and vowed never to fish again in that area. Is it possible there could be an underwater base, submarines and all, submerged in the depths of Lake Superior? Surely over the years, military industrial complex has secretly developed a new generation of technology, so they would wish to keep secretly hidden. It has been pointed out, some objects witnesses have seen coming and going from watery depths may be a new generation of technology, secretly developed and funded and deployed from secret facilities and installations, some of which may be highly clandestine facilities submerged beneath bodies of water. That being said, while some speculate on government and terrestrial technologies being developed, others have postulated a slightly more far out scenario. The sixth and admittedly most far out scenario has been the suggestion of an underwater extraterrestrial base. Coincidentally, or not, Lake Superior has been considered a hot spot for UFOs and USOs, underwater submersible objects for decades. One bizarre incident occurred on November 23, 1953, over the lake. That night, as Air Defense Command radar tracked an unidentified target moving at 500 miles per hour over the lake, a F-89C all-weather jet interceptor from Kinross Air Force Base took off in hot pursuit. Radar operators watched the aircraft close in on the UFO, and then something unexpected happened. The two blips merged and faded on the screen, and all communication with the interceptor ceased. An extensive land and water search found not a trace of either craft nor the two pilots of the interceptor. Granted, this is an incredible story, yet many stories of a similar nature have come to light in the general vicinity. One last coincidence in this regard is the discovery of a few years ago what some have claimed to be an underwater USO base off the coast of Malibu. Although the shape and size are quite different, many of the stories and legends surrounding the area are quite similar. 
Is it conceivable this anomaly is actually an extraterrestrial base of sorts? Possible? Thus far, several options and possibilities have been presented in regards to the origins of this mysterious underwater anomaly. We have looked at cometary or a meteoric impact, volcanism, ancient mega mound site, an Atlantean harbor or mining operation, underwater government base, or possibly extraterrestrial base. Surely there are other possibilities, yet these scenarios have been the most consistently suggested up until this point. Hopes are that by revealing this structure and its possible origins, we can bring awareness to a mystery that has been submerged for thousands of years.